Hello guys, welcome to Practical Research 2 Workshop number 1.1. At the end of this lesson, you will describe characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of quantitative research. Illustrate the importance of quantitative research across fields and differentiate kinds of variables and their uses. Let us now talk about the characteristics, strength, weaknesses, and kinds of quantitative research. Now, what is a, what is a quantitative research? A quantitative research is a research method that involves collecting, analyzing numerical data to understand and explain a certain phenomena. It is characterized by several features and strengths. So listed here are the characteristics of quantitative research. First, objective and measurable. So quantitative research is focused on obtaining what? Numerical data. Okay? That can be measured and analyzed objectively. So this data is open, often obtained through what? You can have surveys, you can have experiments, or you can have observations. Next, we have statistical analysis. So, quantitative researcher, researchers use these statistical techniques to analyze and interpret their data. It allows for the identification of patterns, relationships, and trends within the data. Third is the large sample sizes. Quantitative research often involves larger sample sizes compared to your qualitative research. It is because statistical analysis relies on having a sufficient amount of data to draw valid, valid conclusions. Fourth one, it is structured data collection. Researchers use standardized tools and instruments to collect data, ensuring consistency and reliability in the data collection process. Next, fifth is the generalizability. One of the strengths of quantitative research is its ability to generate findings that can be generalized to larger populations. It is particularly valuable for making predictions or drawing conclusions about a broader group based on the data collected from a certain sample. Next, we have the strengths of quantitative research. We have eight strengths. First is the objectivity where quantitative research aims to minimize bias and subjectivity. Researchers use standardized data collection methods and statistical analysis, thus reducing the potential for personal opinions or interpretations to influence the result. Next is replicability. It is often highly replicable. Applicable. It can be replicated because they rely on structured and standardized procedures. This means that other researchers can follow the same methodology to reproduce the study's findings, enhancing the credibility and reliability of your research. Next, precision and accuracy. It provides precise and accurate measurements. Researchers use 
numerical data allowing for rigorous and detailed analysis. This precision enables the detection of subtle patterns and differences that might not be apparent in qualitative research. Next, statistical significance. It allows researchers to access the statistical significance of their findings. Statistical testing helps determine whether observed effects are likely due to chance or are genuinely meaningful and can be generalized to the broader population. Next, quantifiable trends. Research is well suited for identifying and quantifying trends, relationships, and correlations among variables. Statistical methods enable researchers to what? To measure, to measure and describe this pattern which is valuable for understanding the cause and effects or cause and effect relationship. Sixth one is the efficiency. When we say efficient, particularly we are dealing with large data sets or complex research questions. Data can be collected, managed, and analyzed efficiently using software tools, making it suitable for research that requires processing significant amount of information thus we need to use softwares to efficiently solve these calculations next data driven decision making so quantitative research provides empirical evidence that informs data-driven decision-making processes in various fields. Thus, policymakers, businesses, and organizations rely on quantitative findings to make informed choices and address specific decisions. Next, the last one is the comparability comparable quantitative data is easy comparable across studies so thus researchers can compare the data from one from different sources facilitating the development of a comprehensive understanding of a particular topic or issue okay so you can compare wherever you are in this planet these strengths these eight strengths make quantitative research a valuable approach for addressing research questions testing hypotheses and generating empirical evidence in a wide range of disciplines and research contexts researchers often consider the strength when choosing the appropriate research method to address their specific objectives and questions. So, more likely, quantitative research are the most commonly used research process or kind of research. It is used often rather than the qualitative research next with what is an experimental research design experimental design is structured approach to conduct scientific experiment in a systematic and controlled manner it involves planning and organizing various elements of an experiment to ensure that it yields reliable and valid results so proper experimental design is crucial for drawing meaningful conclusions and making valid inferences from research data okay so the key components of experimental design are research question or hypothesis the independent and dependent variables control group experimental group 
randomization, sample size, experimental procedure, data collection, data analysis, ethical consideration, replication, and the validity and reliability. Next, we will view a PowerPoint presentation for the do's and don'ts in developing or doing or creating science investigatory projects. Okay, you will discuss do's and don'ts in doing SIP, explain the roles of different persons involved, and cite some wrongdoings in science fair. Do maintain the highest ethical standards, integrity, legality, respect for confidentiality and intellectual property, stewardship for the environment, acknowledgement of risk, animal care, human participant protection, potentially hazardous biological agents no to plagiarism forgery use or presentation of others work as one's own fabrication of data this presentation is presented by Genevieve M. Pepito PhD from Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School last October uh, no, August 16 okay so, do observe eligibility and limitations for SIP. You must be from grade 9 to grade 12 students for you to compete. Each student is only allowed to enter one project. Project may include no more than 12 months of continuous research. Students has not reached the age of 20 before the science fair. So, you must not reach the age of 20 you must not be more than ah three members for team project three members lang for team project projects that are demonstration are not appropriate so it's not applicable do follow the proper approval and documentation so these are doc documentation processes forms that you will fill out the abstract must be uh, must describe the research conducted by the student not the supervising adult of course all of the processes involved in the science investigatory project must be done by the student and not by the teacher do not select topic that fits only the interest of the adult sponsor of course that is why you are grouped according to your interest because you will be the one to decide your research problem your research topic do not repeat the same research year after year with the same procedure and simply changing the independent variable so you are just you are just copying or you are just getting the idea of the previous studies Next, do not copy winning research from previous fairs and simply changing the independent variable Alter the photos. You may crop but never Photoshop. Do not write a research title to impress. Write to express. Or we will have another discussion for the writing of research title. Roles and responsibilities of the students. So these are your student responsibilities. Adult sponsor, the teacher's responsibilities. Qualified scientists, of course, we need to we need to have guidance with the help of a qualified scientist for us to do our research. Can also be your teacher or your research advisor. Okay, you must review the ISEF rules relevant to the project. And your supervisor, and that is me. I am your supervisor, research supervisor, research teacher. And about what's the difference between adult sponsor and research supervisor? Uh, adult sponsor safety oh, this is your 
in search advisor. Yo, I know. This is your uh, research advisor in the school that will guide you. This is their role for those for for whoever teacher you will select as your adult sponsor slash qualified scientist and i will be your research teacher slash designated supervisor so i will facilitate all the groups researchers researches okay common wrongdoings during science fair student claims she performed the experiment when, in fact, it was qualified scientists who did the experimentation. Of course, the student will be the one to perform the experiment. The qualified scientists will just verify or the procedure or guide the, sci the student. But the student will be the one to perform. Okay? So, this will be validated in your defense. Whenever the panel will ask you questions. And that is the role of having the Q&A portion to validate if you, you are the one who performed the experiment or not. Okay, next, adult sponsor gives his or her college or master's te thesis or previous research to his or her students, of course. Hindi man yan applicable kasi hindi ako ang magbibigay ng inyong research problem. Pero this is this happened happens in other school. No to previous research or the college or master's thesis thesis of your research teacher or your research advisor okay next student presents an invention or computer program that she only tested and did not actually make okay test lang niya pero hindi niya siya ang naghimo so dapat ikaw siya maghimo okay you should develop the program you should write the codes for your program okay next adult sponsor writes the whole research paper of the students no 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 you will be the one to write your research research paper next a team research was made as an individual research so you will decide so wala tayong individual research kasi teaman kayo Pero, if you decide to have your individual research, pwede kayo mag-individual research. Okay, data logbook. Secure the data logbook. Dapat you will have your logbook before the start of your experimentation. Day 1. Kawa na kayo na data logbook. Hindi gagawin ang logbook pagkatapos na ng lahat-lahat. Okay? Okay. Dated earlier than the experimentation process. A logbook is a logbook, not a collection of a scratch paper. Oh. I will require every group to have data logbook. A uniform data logbook. Next, photos were taken after all the research was finished. So, dapat mag kayo ng pictures during your experimentation. Okay. Kay mag... Oh, wearing the same clothes. So, pwede naman, ma'am. Hindi, magpalit lang kami ng clothes, ma'am. No. Unethical. Dapat, totoo talaga na... Pinikturan nyo yan while you are doing the experiments. Di kayo nagbaon lang kayo ng mga ng damit, tapos nagpicture-picture lang kayo, palitan ng damit. Okay? That is wrong. And that is the end of the
slide for on August 16, do's and don'ts in the wing SIP. Next, we have the importance. Importance of quantitative research across the field. So, we have different importance. Empirical validation of scientific theories, data-driven di discoveries, precision and measurement, statistical analysis, for inference, experimental design and control, replicability and peer pressure, large-scale data analysis, mathematical modeling, technological advancement, evidence-based policy, and decision-making. So, can kayo, no? Okay. Then, so let us discuss this one. Technological advancement. Example, the development of algorithms for machine learning and artificial intelligence relies heavily on quantitative research. Applications include image recognition, natural language processing, and autonomous systems. So you, can, you can innovate and invent certain processes and products that will help advance the community. What else? How about large-scale data analysis? This is applicable in environmental science researchers who use quantitative methods to analyze large data sets from satellites, sensors, and field measurements to monitor climate change, deforestation, and other global environmental trends. And marami pang examples. Okay, on why quantitative research are important. Researcher, researches, maraming mga research. Nga inline system field, which are important in our community okay okay how about data driven discoveries yes maraming mga na discover because of quantitative research an example for that is the genomic sequencing projects such as human genome projects they relied on quantitative analysis of vast amounts of genetic data to identify genes associated with diseases and genetic variations. Okay, that is human genome projects. So these are the importance of quantitative research in the STEM field. Okay, next we have life science versus Physical science. So, in the science investigatory project, we have two categories. The basic two categories. The life science and physical science. How can we categorize our project or our research as life or as physical science? Okay, the... ICEF or International Science and Engineering Fair categorizes science investigatory project into two main categories, the life science and the physical science. These categories help classify and organize project based on their primary focus and subject matter. So when we say life science category, the focus is life science project primarily deals with living organisms, biological process, and related phenomena. Example, biology, genetics, ecology, medicine, microbiome, environmental science. Study, studies on plant growth, genetic research, microbiome analysis, or the impacts of pollutants on quality aquatic life so there is life that are affected 
there are li living organisms, biotic organisms affected by your research. How about physical? So, the focus of physical science is non-living physical aspects of the natural world such as matter, energy forces, and physical processes. Includes experiments on chemical reaction, investigations into the behavior of light, studies on properties of materials, or the analysis of geological formations. Okay? Sige. So, let us read some sample SIP for life science category. Again, presented by Genevieve M. Pipito, PhD. Number one. Is it life or physical science? Effects of Dendrocalamus latiflorus or sweet bamboo leaves extract on the mortality and morphology of Pomacea canaliculata, or golden apple snail. Is it physical or life science? The focus here is the mortality and morphology of the golden apple snail. When? Sweet bamboo leaves extracts are applied or exposed to the golden apple snail. The answer is life. Correct. Next. Allo, is it me you're looking for? A clinical trial to determine the effects of aloe vera on dog skin allergies. Again, life science. Third, analysis on the different formulations of agricultural waste as potting media of Cavendish banana merry plants. It's life science. Next, panyawan leaves and stems, crude extras as wood preservatives. This is, of course, physical science. Next, bluternate, clitoria, ternatia. Seed extract biofilm as Culix, Quinquifas, Chatus, Mosquito, Larvicide. Of course, life. And I'm going to involve mosquitoes. This is a sample of an Emerald Sea paper. What is an Emerald Sea? This is used primarily in science investigatory projects, presentation of research paper because it's concise. Not hard to read. Dili kay baga. So, gamay ra kayo iyang pages. Pero, naan na dito tanan. So, these are the examples of science fair that you will join in the future. Okay? So, those were the students of Mom Genevieve doing... SIP and participating in the National Science and Technology Fair. Okay, as project upgrade or the University of the Philippines growing and developing enterprises is UP's Mindanao UP Mindanao Technological Technology Business Incubator. That's it. Next, number three na tayo. Variables. What are variables? Ano pala ang variables? A variable is a characteristic, attribute, or factor that can take on different values or level and is deliberately manipulated, controlled, or measured by the researchers. Okay, so variables are fundamental to the experimental process as they are used to investigate the 
cause and effect relationships, test hypothesis, and understand how changes in one variable may impact to another variable. So these are the types of variables. IV, independent variable, is the variable that the researcher intentionally manipulates or varies to observe its effect on the dependent variable. It is often considered as the cause, the predictor, mm, predictor variable. Example, when you study the impact of, or oh, in, I know, in social studies. So, as a teacher like me, I will uh, have different teaching methods on the student's test score. So, the teaching method is the independent variable while the score of the students are the dependent variable. So, dependent variable is the variable that is observed or measured or recorded in response to the changes in the independent variable. So, kung so, affected ang dependent variable sa independent variable. Suppose I have independent variables, traditional and computer-based instruction, and then I will let my students take the test. So, the score of my students are the dependent variable depending on the dependent independent variable na binigay ko okay sige control control variables are constant or controlled to prevent them from influencing a relationship between independent and dependent variables so ano example ng control variable Sige, example tayo. Ganina education research 'yon. Teaching methods. Ngayon naman, gawa tayo ng ano, study about drug efficacy. Independent dosage of drug kung low dose, medium dose, or high dose. Then, dependent kung ano yung outcome ng patient. Na-improve ba? Or ano ba yung mga side effect? If those low, medium, or high dosage. Sa control, placebo. No, uh, controls siya. So, ang control natin ay walang, hindi siya low, medium, or high na dosage. Walang binigay na uh, drug. Walang medication na binigay sa control. Okay? Next, extraneous variable. Fourth yan. Variables other than independent and dependent variable that may affect the outcome of the experiment. Researchers aim to control or account for these variables to enhance the internal validity of the study. So, yung mga variables that may affect the outcome of the experiment. Okay? Sige. So, these variables, the four variables, in the experiment, allows researchers to systematically examine. Examine the impact of the changes in one factor. Ano nga yung one factor? The independent variable on another factor, which is the dependent variable, while controlling for potential confounding variables. 
Thus, the proper identification, manipulation, and measurement of these variables are essentials for validity and reliability of the findings. So, yun. Example. So, that is the end of our of our class. So, read this examples and start thinking of your of your research problem in your mini group the five groups that we have five members in one group that we have okay that's it for tonight third today rather today na the i sorry okay bye class